Oh, oh, baby. Thank you, baby. Thank oh, you. That was amazing. I, you, I don't know how big, uh, I, I'm assuming that if we're gonna keep a fish, it needs to be like this big. Anything under that, I like feel bad. Big enough to eat. Big enough to eat. We let him go. Oh. This is the moment on camera. Your first fish. First fish. In the Yukon. In the Yukon, yep. Oh. Have I got one? Oh, I might have just caught some grass. Good morning from a very summery day in the Yukon. We left you last week when we were in Denali National Park over in Alaska. And that was actually as far south as we we're heading in the main bit of Alaska. We crossed back into Canada yesterday, but our Alaska adventures are not over yet. Some of you might be able to guess where we're going. But spring is here. We're parked next to this beautiful river. It's the first time Ben's been able to get the fishing rod out since we left Baja, because as soon as we kind of reached Idaho back in March, everything's been completely frozen or half frozen. It might be easy if I show you on the map what our plan is for this week. This is the state of Alaska. This has been our route north all the way up to Prudhoe Bay. Last week we came down to Fairbanks and then we just popped down here to Denali National Park. We did a little bit of the um, the park road into the park where we saw the grizzly bear, which was amazing. As we head south, there is one section where we're backtracking on ourselves, and that is from here from Fairbanks down into the Yukon, to kind of this section here. And this is what we've done over the past couple of days. It hasn't been anything particularly special. It's been pretty cloudy and rainy, and we have just been going back on ourselves back into Canada because there is more to Alaska than just this. So it's probably easy if I show you on the Canada map because you get a bit more of an overview. So this is Alaska and this is the panel handle that comes down here. Most of this is only accessible by boat except a couple of spots. One of them is called Haynes and we can get to it from this road through the Yukon. So we've come back out of Alaska, back into the Yukon. We're parked around here and today our plan is to head down towards Haynes. We're also then going to get a ferry across to a place called Skagway and then come back up on ourselves in like this V shape. Oh, well pleased with that. Well done, baby. Yeah. No dinner though. No dinner. No dinner. So no you have to go on, back, baby. No return on investment yet. No return on investment yet, no. <laughs> need about 10 salmon to make up for the amount of <laughs> stuff you bought for fishing. That is very, very true. What's really cool that on the way up to Alaska, one of our favourite parts was driving along the Kluani uh, mountain range and now coming back down south we get to drive through it because we're heading to Haynes and Haynes the drive itself is supposed to be absolutely phenomenal and we've got the weather for it so fingers crossed it's gonna be a great drive. I what have, is this? Oh, just to fight off squirrels because that will do nothing for a bear Got the klaxon. Oh god. Don't, don't. Oh. I could have dropped my camera. Oh. Ah! Stop! I could have dropped my croissant! We are going on a little hike and there are bears in this area, so. Right, this is our first hike up in BC, up in Alaska, because it's been so snowy, all the trails have been closed. I am mildly concerned about the bear situation or the grizzly bear situation, only because if it was Ben and I, I wouldn't be so worried. We've got bear spray and all that kind of stuff. But if you see a grizzly bear, you're supposed to be calm, not make any loud or sudden movements, and scout, as you saw with the coyotes, he's a brave little dog. And if he sees something that he thinks is a threat, there's a very good chance he's gonna do all three of those things. <laughs> so that's what I'm more like concerned about, but fingers crossed we'll be okay. massive lump of rock is an old glacier so this used to be covered in snow and a huge ice pack and this is actually the toe of the glacier so as the ice has melted all that rock that's inside that carves all the valleys and everything has been left behind and it's what we're stood on right now a rock glacier is almost alive like a ponderous beast it moves grows and devours forests I never even knew rock glaciers were a thing until today. The rocks feel nice. <laughs> We've left the warm valley of spring behind us. 
all the green trees and the blue lakes and we've climbed up and up and now we're in kind of these mountain plateaus and it is just still so beautifully, beautifully snowy up here. I really want a Toblerone. Every time I see these mountains, I want a Toblerone. <laughs> they make you hungry. Yeah. Yet again, we are left speechless by another incredible road. We keep thinking that we've been so spoiled by everything that we're just gonna get like used to it or somehow jaded by it, but it's not the case. Like, So this is the Haynes Highway and it is absolutely breathtaking and spectacular and every other word that I've used, I'm running out of them. I don't think I've got any words left to describe the scenes up here, it's mad. Right, let's cross back into the States. Hopefully as easy as it was to cross into Canada. We're back in Alaska, that was nice and easy. That was really, really easy. Now we're in Alaska. Yay! Yay! Having a quick coffee break. Look at that for a view. So this road is actually part of an old trading route from the Thlenga Indians. Now they were the, they're the native people here and they used to keep all of the newcomers, so all of like the English, the Americans, the Russians who traded with them down on the coast. They wouldn't let them come into the interior. Eventually over time there were too many newcomers and their way of life did ultimately change. But all of these roads that we're driving on now, you think how did they build them through these landscapes and mountains? But they've been here for thousands and thousands of years. You often associate history with castles and ruins and things like that, but in places like this, the landscape is history, you're in it all the time. It's amazing. It's really opened up now, isn't it? We are parked. I would say on the sea. We've made it down to the coast at least. This is like a little inlet. It's not actually the sea, but it's almost like a fjord. Like it reminds me of like what Norway must look like in some parts. Part in this little rest area. There's a couple of other campers here. Little toilet block and priceless views, isn't it? It is, yeah. It is beautiful. I really feel like we've crossed into like a different kind of part of Alaska today, don't you? Yeah, like it's, it's less really like rugged and harsh and it's just lush and green and oh it's amazing. Mountainous. Still really mountainous and rugged in parts, yeah. This is nice. That's what I got. <laughs> well last night what a beautiful little park up so peaceful and calm and now that we're further south the nights are getting a lot darker which is helping us sleep so much better we are now heading into Haynes town this morning to have a little mooch around to see what it's all about it's meant to be a beautiful little coastal Alaskan town so we're gonna see what that's like before catching a ferry Haynes is a quiet and quintessentially Alaskan coastal town that promised local artists and independent boutiques we found most of it still closed for the season, but we did find a cute coffee shop called the Rusty Compass to people watch while we waited for our ferry. We should be going up that inlet there. I think Skagway's that way. I need a weird gap. Yeah, I do as well. So for a lot of Alaska, you can't drive in. <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of Alaska, the only way you can get to it is by boat or plane, especially along the coast. They've got an entire ferry network that serves loads of ports along the coast of Alaska and a huge cruise ship industry as well. The ferries in Alaska are so expensive, so we're doing a 45 minute ferry and it's costing us 200 
dollars. Or is it sixty four dollars for the both of us, yeah. and then one hundred and thirty one for the Depending for the that. van, and then maybe some taxes. Yeah, the Thankfully, the dogs are free, but. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Judging by the views of these mountains, I don't think it's going to be your average ferry trip. Oh, let's go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Here we go, our first and last Alaskan ferry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one of the reasons that we want to see this ferry is that the Alaska coastline is meant to be one of the most incredible in the world with all of these fjords and inlets and islands. And even though we're not gonna do one of the big six hour trips, we thought this one will give us a little taste of what it's like. And it is incredible already. I mean, look at this. We spoke to a German couple yesterday who were parked in the same car park we were. They said they were parked just a couple of bays over the day before and a whale, a big humpback whale, was about 10 meters from their van because it's obviously so deep, it just kind of drops straight off. So the whales came really close to shore. It's amazing. about Skagway is that during the Klondike Gold Rush in the 1800s, which was one of the biggest gold rushes in the Yukon, this is where the prospectors would have come and landed. They would have trekked across what's called the Chilkut Pass and over into the Yukon and towards Dawson City, but this is where they would have arrived to start their hunt for gold. So this is what they would have been seeing as they pulled up in their ships. Minus, Minus the cruise ships. <laughs> Minus the cruise ships. that so let's go welcome see. to skagway it's coming off the boat we've seen another english like an english motorhome queuing to go back on that is the first time we've seen another english vehicle since we've been over here apart from chris and marianne apart from chris and marianne obviously since yeah since august oh, that's such a shame they were like yeah couldn't passing, go and stop like, and like, talk to them like ships passing in the night Li yeah literally We've just taken the dogs for a big walk. We are gonna go and head into Skagway. At the minute, there's four massive cruise ships all in there. It looks absolutely hectic. We're gonna go see what it's about. It's basically like an old gold rush town. There's loads of historic buildings. It's kind of still set up for that. How authentic it is, not quite sure yet, but we're gonna go see what it's about. It's like a massive amusement park. Completely fronted in driftwood, it's amazing. Just escaped down the side street. I mean, I do wonder whether like an old gold rush town should still have that level of like hecticness. Mm. It probably shouldn't be quiet and like. No. But wow, it was that's hectic. The <laughs> that is the busiest place I think we've been in a long time. Yeah. Well, that was a short but sweet little introduction to Skagway. That was pretty much bedlam in there. But for saying how crazy the little town was, it is situated in the most picturesque, incredible, dramatic valley. We've just got huge mountains like looming up right above us. So now the plan is to try and find somewhere to park tonight. Having a very experimental dinner tonight. We've got some like Moroccan style meatballs. We're gonna try making them with flatbreads, but we've never made flatbread before and we haven't got any yeast, baking powder, self and flour. So we found a recipe that goes like all purpose flour, some butter, salt, and milk. But we've only got oat milk, so. This is gonna be very gonna interesting. <laughs> Ben's in charge of the bread. And there's no takeaway anywhere near either. So no. if it doesn't come out nice, we ain't eating tonight. Is it in? Oh no. Rest for 30 minutes. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> no. Look at number four. Why don't you just read the instructions I, before? Well, I didn't think I had to read that far <laughs> down. Gal looks about as fed up waiting for this day to rest as I am. <laughs> I've got a jar of Branston pickle. Some Branston pickles are good for one thing, I guess. 
they, they, they need to be so much thinner. <laughs> Ow. Oh, it has to be way thinner than that because that's not edible. <laughs> what do we get? It is. It's not. It's like a rock. Crack out. Then Wait, look. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, watch out. Yeah. You need a rolling pin when Ben's, you've got Bruxton Ben's pickle. Ben's at it with the Bruxton pickle. <laughs> it's quite aggressive. Yeah, you got to really like get into it. Got with some mint. It would work really well with parsley as well. Right then, <sighs> chef, do you want to tell us what this is? Mm, I saw it on an Instagram reel. It's like Moroccan. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, girl. It's like Moroccan um, meatballs and chickpeas and like a tomatoey sauce. It's with like sumac and paprika and cinnamon and stuff. It's got this yogurt, like this yogurt on top, which is actually yogurt mixed with borsan, mint and lemon, and then Ben's. World famous flatbreads. World famous flatbreads. Mmm. Good. Good, good, good. Mmm. Chewing those flatbreads. <laughs> Getting through those flatbreads, baby. Well, that was. Ten out of ten. Well done, baby. So good. I just I could see over in the tree line like this big brown animal, and then all of a sudden there's one, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six people have come out on horseback. Oh. <laughs> This is where we came in yesterday, right down that channel there on the ferry. And Skagway is just behind that peninsula, peninsula there. And we then followed the road downhill on the bottom of that forest. And now we're here at these amazing tidal flats. We've got the mountains there, mountains all around us. Half expecting to see a grizzly bear with all this grass here. Thankfully, haven't seen any. But today, so we've come in that way. And today we're crossing back into Canada, straight over those snow mountains up the Klondike Highway. So behind where we were parked, there's something hidden in the forest. We're gonna go see if we can find it. Picture this, it is 1898. You've heard rumor of fortunes beyond your wildest dreams in some of the most inhospitable and isolated lands that you can possibly imagine. You've made a perilous and treacherous journey across the seas just to get here. You arrive in a town called Dai. There's places to eat, places to replenish, but your journey has only just begun. The gold is still miles and miles away, up over a mountain pass. How much do you reckon you would risk to get your hands on a fortune so big that it would set you up for life? Because that's what thousands of prospectors did when they came here. This was just the start of their journey. We are stood right now in the town of Dai, and this is all that is left of it. It was the rival city to Skagway for the prospectors who were arriving in Alaska to go and prospect for gold over in the Yukon. So what happened was the railroad was built in Skagway and the railroad ended up taking people across the mountain so they didn't have to make that treacherous journey on foot and that made Dai kind of fall by the wayside and people just moved over to Skagway instead. Hello. What sights this doorway must have seen? So this is the remnants of an old boat and the tidal flats we were at earlier used to come all the way up here. This is Main Street and this, this is what it looks like now and this is what it used to look like. We had 150 businesses on Main Street alone and now it's just a little pretty path through the trees. They say between two, in two years they had 30 to 40,000 prospectors arrive in Dai, and that's not even the ones who arrived in Skagway. This is the rival town to Skagway. 30 to 40,000 people here, and now it is just completely overrun. It's crazy how quickly nature reclaims it. Like the height of Dai was in 1898. My nan's house was built in 1896, and to think that if it is left, yeah. this is what would happen. It's crazy. Oh. Let's 
sorry, no, we uh, shipped, because this is a UK van, so we shipped into Halifax in Nova Scotia. Perfect, Perfect. Thank, you so thank you very much. Thank have you. a nice have day. Nice day. So this road is a Klondike Highway, and we are driving right alongside these huge, like, blue lakes that are now unfrozen, and the mountains are just, like, crashing into the water, and it's killing me that I can't get the drone up because it's so wet this would just look so epic. So I think today is one of those days that we're gonna have to admit defeat. There was a few things that we wanted to do along the Klondike Highway that it is just way too wet for. So what we're gonna do is push on and just see where we end up, probably somewhere in the Yukon in Canada. We've managed to escape the rain finally, and if I can sum up the Yukon in one image, this would be it. You've got fast flowing rivers, forests as far as you can see, and snow capped mountains. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. We're gonna stay here for a couple of days. Chess is gonna get the edit done. I'm gonna be walking the dogs a lot. It's a nice little park up. We're just there. This is where we drove down the Haynes Highway. So this is where we started off in the Yukon, and we came down through the mountains here, all the way down to Haynes, which is really pretty. And then we got the ferry up this little fjord thing here to Skagway, and then just came back on ourselves in this little V shape. So dipped into Alaska and back out again. But you get a better context of it on the bigger Canada map. So this is a good overview of the past couple of months when we were God, back in Montana and Idaho, the Icefields Parkway, and then we came up and started the Alaska Highway all the way up to Fairbanks and then up to Dead Horse and Prudhoe Bay, down to Denali, and then back into the Yukon. This is where we started this week and we've just done this little, this little V shape down to Haynes and Skagway and back here and we're parked somewhere in the Yukon at the minute and next week we're officially getting back into British Columbia we came up this side of it and we're going to be coming back down the opposite side with another quick stop in Alaska somewhere 10 points if you can guess where